Vibrant News, showing you the light. Season 6, episode 14. Zombies? 1147. Maxwell Stevenson. I'm Maxwell Stevenson, and today we're bringing you a very special broadcast regarding current events. Leela Cortez. And I'm here too. Maxwell. That's right. I'm joined by local media representative Leela Cortez. She's from Kasdan Public Radio, and she's here to prove a more scientific approach on the situation. As if there's anything scientific about zombies. Leela. I highly doubt these zombies are real, Maxwell. It's unconfirmed by the CDC, but these sightings are likely a new illness going around. Or a strain of rabies. Maxwell. If you don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about several bizarre reports coming from places all across the globe. First, an aeroplane filled with the undead. Then, creepy birds being sighted, even a zoo full of transformed zombie monsters, and more. Leela. Maxwell, I think you're overplaying the situation. I'm sure this is nothing more than a viral contagion that has somehow jumped species. Perhaps it makes one look like the undead. Maxwell. Wrong. I'm not downplaying the situation. Long-time listeners will know that I suspected several companies being linked to having plans to start zombie apocalypses. This is very well in the work of Company 7, Paracel Industries, or even Shepherd Technology. Leela. Uh, what? Maxwell. That's right, Leela. I said it. One of those shady companies is behind the zombie apocalypse. Leela. <laughs> Max. You should refrain from calling it that. Zombies don't make sense. And as I've said, this is likely a new outbreak. Phone rings. Maxwell. Looks like we have a caller on the phone. Caller. Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Maxwell. Indeed. Who are you and what's your call about? Caller. My name isn't important. What I've got to say is... Leela. And what is that? Caller. I am one of the survivors at Caston Airport. I was hiding in the lavatory of the plane, away from those zombies. The whole thing was terrifying, dude. There was this guy sitting in front of me. He looked like he was bitten by something. Like a bird. Maxwell. And then? Caller. Well, you're not going to believe me, but he started changing into this thing. This monster. His face and neck just melted into one and he started chasing and biting people. I ran to hide as soon as I could. I heard those screams, all those people dying. I took a peek once, just to find half of everybody dead, or turned into the same thing. The first guy was. Only the pilots were safe. Maxwell. How did you survive? Like, get off the plane? Caller. When the plane landed, these guys came in, said they were the Bizarre Phenomena Bureau or something, a government thing. They downed those creatures like it was nothing. It was crazy. They told me to stay silent about it. But dude, this stuff has got to go public. Leela, maybe that was the CDC. Maybe you heard them say it wrong. Caller. Nah, I'm sure of it. Phone clicks off. Maxwell. See, Leela? Undeniable proof of zombies. Leela. That is hardly any proof, Max. Looks like this thing has spread further than we thought, I murmured, listening to the radio on the evacuation helicopter. Father, repeated Archer, listening to the conspiracy show. The man on it, Maxwell, droned on and on, speaking of monsters in zoos, monsters in the White House, monsters everywhere. Kaz glanced at Dr. Kreese, who was sitting farther up the helicopter next to Mr. Shepherd, and asked, Are you going to confront her about the whole doorway thing? At Mayflower Springs. Not yet, I replied. I want to see Quint's side of the story. We still don't have the big picture. Quint, Kaz murmured, thinking. I think I saw two of Mr. Shepard's guys load up containment chamber I've never seen onto one of the other choppers. Once we land, I bet we could find it. You could ask your boss, I suggested. He could let you. Right. Kaz got up walking over to his boss, and then returned with a disappointed look on their face. Can't. Quinn's been taken to a more effective containment cell once we arrive, and I don't have the clearance to get there. We'll have to talk to him before he gets moved. 
Archer suggested. I agree, I empathised. Kaz, you work here. Any ideas? The only option would be to take out the guards, Kaz decided. Or, I guess we could distract them. Distracting them sounds a lot better, I mused. No need for excessive violence. How can we do that? Archer added. Easy, Kaz continued. I may not have access to the cell Quint's heading to, but I do have clearance to launch several alarms. Here's the plan. Once we get there, I'll sneak into Central Command, raise the alarm. At the highest level, most, if not all guards, are sent away to handle the situation. Then how many do you estimate will be left behind? I inquired. Two, maybe three, Kaz informed. As opposed to the six or seven that'd be there. Then it's a plan, I agreed. Kaz, you do your thing. Me and Archer. No, Archer cut in. I can't do this. I looked at him, puzzled. Why? I was hired to keep Chris safe, and she ordered me to keep you, Dr. Valerio, safe. Archer explained. This goes against my contract. But you helped us get to Mayflower Springs, I pointed out. We're not on site anymore, Archer explained. I have no more responsibility to protect. I'm done. I'm just waiting on Dr. Kreese to wire me the rest of my money. I see, Kaz murmured. Look, Archer began, I'm not against your quest for the truth, but this isn't my thing. At the most, I'll give you a gun to help, but this job is over. When I signed up, I just wanted the money and my family's freedom. Freedom? Kaz questioned. Dr. Kreese blackmailed my family. Archer said somberly. I've worked for Crease a few times before. She liked how I handled things, so she wanted me back on this one. When I didn't want to return for the money, she threatened my family. But now, the contract's over, and I have to go home and probably hide from Paracel. I understand, I murmured, accepting the situation. Thank you, Archer muttered. If it helps, I do hope that you two uncover the truth and find out... Who the hell Quint is? But I can't. I nodded silently. The rest of the trip was quiet as we flew across the night sky. Below us, we saw nothing but chaos. The infected creatures rampaging, destroying all they saw. Cities were ablaze, screams coming from below. But soon, we arrived, landing on the roof of Shepherd Technologies' building. Around us, things were noticeably calm in Kasdan City. The building was on the outskirts, and judging by the noticeable lack of screams or flames, it looked as if the infection hadn't spread that far yet. I got off, watching Dr. Kreese and Mr. Shepard walk away into the distance to talk more. I wasn't sure what they could possibly be talking about, but it was clearly important. I'll head in to sound the alarm, Kaz told, then pointing at a cubic containment cell being loaded. Quint should be in that one. I've never seen that type of chamber before. I got it, I smiled. Kaz went in, and I took a moment to appreciate the fine view from above the building. All around me, Shepherd employees began unloading everything from Kaz's outpost. Zombies I'd seen in the menagerie were in chambers, all being shoved onto a massive moving platform that took them deeper into the facility. A few times, mistakes were made and some of the terrifying creatures escaped, though the swift actions of the handlers quickly fixed the situation. There was an odd, mesmerising quality to how they did their work, as if each were individually hand-picked to do their jobs. Maybe they were. And then I was broken out of my mesmerising trance by the glaring noise of a pulsating siren. Cars had done their job, and now... It was time to do mine. I watched the two guards around Quint's containment cube stay behind, waving the others away. Okay, maybe we overestimated our abilities. There was no way in hell I was going to be able to take down the two overly buff men in front of me. Maybe I could charm my way to victory. No, that wouldn't do. That would be ridiculous. And using the gun, I would clearly alert more guards to my location. But then, I realised something. I could free Quint, perhaps. I wasn't entirely sure if I could trust him, but he hadn't shown any signs of aggression towards me, 
and even pointed me in the right direction towards the truth. Hey, I greeted, walking towards the guards. You're Dr. Valerio? One asked. I nodded. We're told you're one of the people that need to be kept completely safe. Interesting, I noted. By the way, how do these containment cubes work? It was the other guard's turn. This button here, he pointed, directing me to a green button next to a pad. Unlocks the cube, and then it can be opened only from the inside. But you'd need the passcode for the button to work. Remarkably simple, I murmured. The codes. I thought back to Mayflower Springs. That guy, Jesus Kreese. He was always leaving the passcode everywhere, right? One of those codes hopefully would work on the containment field. But the codes were for Paracel Industries, not Shepard Technology, like I had initially suspected. So Mr. Shepard really had nothing to hide. I looked, closer, inspecting the cube. I remembered that Dr. Kreese had once said that Paracel manufactured basically everything, and beside a small made-in-China label, I saw the insignia of Paracel. I've never seen that brand of password pad, I lied. Mind if I take a look at it? No prob, the first guard agreed. Just don't accidentally enter in a company code. One thing I've learnt while working for various employers is that safes of all kinds have some sort of universal reset code, and betting on the codes Jesus had left out for all to see, I was hoping that maybe, just maybe, one of them was the universal reset code for Paracel. I typed in the first of the numbers I'd seen. 2593. Wrong. 1448. Wrong again. 5938. Yet again wrong. One left. 1234. Password reset activated, it read. Wow. That was surprising. 1234. Did this Jesus guy invent these things? I set the password to the first code, typed it in, and pressed the green button. I looked at the guards, who were talking between themselves about sports and how dangerous their job was. I looked through the containment chamber. Quint smiled, clearly knowing what I'd done. I opened the door. The guards didn't have time to react. In a split second, Quint burst out the door, knocking the first guard to the ground. The other guy threw a punch, but Quint dodged, grabbed his arm, and threw him down. Then, he did something a bit... inexplicable. He tapped the forehead of the first guard, and his eyes rolled back, then collapsed on the floor. The second guy tried to take out his gun, but Quint simply looked straight at him, and he too collapsed asleep. What the hell was that? I exclaimed. Magic, he unmuted. Now, I understand you went to Mayflower Springs. I know you're here for my side of the story. First, how did you know I'd free you? I inquired. And that the universal reset code would work? You're not asking the right questions, he murmured. But let's just say I know a lot of secrets. What are the right questions? Questions are subjective, Quinn chanted. There are no right or wrong questions. But you just said... I'm kidding. Just messing with you, Quint laughed. But I'll tell you what you want to know. I want to know your side of the story, I asked. Three questions. Do you come from the other world? What the hell is a devourer? And how do we stop it from taking over the world? Quint sighed, pacing around. I come from a group of highly trained individuals that have sworn to keep this world safe from extra-dimensional threats. The Seven, that's what it's called. Really? Yeah, Quint explained. The Devourer is a dangerous entity who resides in the world between worlds. That's what you people call the other world. It's a cosmic being who desires to make all things one with it. Very Lovecraftian, I commented. I haven't found a way to stop its spread, currently, Quint explained. It's destroyed massive parts of the world between, and I asked Mr. Shepard for help on closing the doorways in an attempt to isolate the Devourer away from our world. Okay, interesting, I noted. I need to know more. I tried to warn Dr. Shard, order her to leave, Quint informed. She ignored my warnings and took me prisoner. I kept warning her that the Devourer would take note of the doorway and cross into our world. Of course... 
You know Dr. Kreese pressed for Dr. Shard to stay in the world. Okay. The devourer awakened and began to spread into our world through the doorway, Quint continued. I was able to escape, and by sheer luck, I was able to collapse the underground compound underneath Mayflower Springs, prevent the devourer from spreading that way for a while. Eventually, though, I could still sense it spreading, although slowly. So you contacted Shepherd Technology? Indeed. I can open doorways, but not close them. I do so by using the pure life energy of a person as they die to cut a hole between worlds. Unfortunately, before we learned more on the closing doorways, the Devourer took me into the other world. Wait, but when it did, Kaz said all the doors closed, I pointed out. I thought you couldn't close doorways. I'm not too sure myself what happened, he confessed. All I know was that that thing killed me, and I was brought back from the dead by some guy with triangular glasses. After that, I escaped before the Devourer could kill me again creating the doorway at Mayflower Valley. And so you returned to Dr. Kreese. Only then did she understand the gravity of the situation. And that's when you contacted me, I concluded. And now we have to find a way to close the doorway at Mayflower Valley and Mayflower Springs. Not necessarily. The world between isn't an evil world. If we can kill the Devourer, we will return balance to the world between. As long as the doorways are monitored, any invading force shouldn't be too hard to deal with. Plus, it can always bury the doors in concrete. But how? How are we going to kill this cosmic entity? I pressed on. I may have a solution. A new voice emerged. It was Kaz, back from the security station. We regrouped, and I told them of all that Quint had revealed. So, what's your solution? I asked. I was looking around Shepard's files regarding our work with doorways. Kaz began. We can't breathe in the other world. Wrong, Quint cut in. You can't breathe in parts infected by the Devourer. Oh, never mind then, Kaz muttered. Anyway, theoretically, Alicia's enzyme should work on it, right? My enzyme? I questioned. I built that to destroy the outer layer protecting the insides. It isn't meant to destroy things infected by the plague. With a few modifications, Kaz replied. It should work. In my research regarding the animals of the other world, I noticed they, specifically the ones I assume to be infected, have some sort of parasite within their bodies. A parasite? Quint commented. And that could explain the behaviour of the infected. Neutralise the parasite, I began. Save the world, Kaz finished. That will only stop the devourer momentarily, Quint continued. If we're going to destroy it, We've got to strike at its very heart. The Upside Down Church, I realised. How can we kill that? Easy. A familiar yet old voice appeared. We all turned to see Archer. He was back and carrying a lot more guns and explosives than usual. We'll blow it up. And before you ask why, well, I won't have a family to go back to if everyone's dead. Gotta do my part in saving the world. A noble choice. Quint complimented, doing a little bow. Now, let's get into the world between worlds and kill a god. Well, first we have to make that modified enzyme to kill the zombie parasites, I reminded. Right, Kaz added. There's a lab in the lower levels. We can use my access to make it. I think that's also where they're taking the zombie animals. We should be able to study them while we modify the enzyme. And so, we ran, following Kaz to the nearest elevator. Quint being a fugitive of the company, was stopped by guards. But after some especially fancy moves from him and Archer, the guards were dealt with, and we descended. But when we arrived, things weren't as wonderful as we thought it would be. The floors and walls were drenched with blood. The dead lined the halls. The sight was easily one of the worst I'd ever seen, and the smell was worse. I almost threw up right then and there, but somehow I didn't. What happened? Kaz puzzled, thinking out loud. And then we heard a voice. One of the guards we thought was dead was alive, only mortally wounded and inches from death. They... 
escaped, the guard gasped. We heard a noise, and around a corner emerged another zombified animal. It had once clearly been a bird of some sort, probably a swan, but now it was bigger, with sharp spines jutting out from its back and wings. The spines vibrated as it shrieked, sending a wave of ear-shattering noise upon us. It was just like the mountain lion, but worse. I looked back to see the elevator, but it was gone. Someone had already called it up. I looked back, only to see that two other swans had joined it, all snarling and vibrating their spines. Kaz audibly gulped. Those spines are loaded with poison. Run, cried Archer. I agree, Quint added. Then why aren't we running yet? I shouted. Right, Kaz murmured. And then I was running, faster than I'd ever run before, turning the holes of the Shepherd Technology Complex. We ran, following Kaz's lead, hoping they were heading towards the lab. As we ran, Archer whipped out his pistol, sending a couple shots behind us. I heard a creature squeal, and I looked back. One swan was down, whining on the floor. Two more still remained, and seemed faster than ever. I returned to running, then bumping into Kaz, realising they had stopped. Kaz, why are we stopping? I screamed. And then I looked past them to see a familiar sight. A black bear, infected, and though I wasn't sure if it was the same one I'd first seen, it sure looked a hell of a lot like it. The bear in the distance roared. That way, Kaz called, pointing to the right at yet another hallway. We ran, but then we stopped when we saw yet another familiar face. The mountain lion. We turned back, returning to the fork, only to be faced by the bear at one end, the mountain lion behind us, the swans at the other, and a deer with antlers poking out of every inch of its body ahead. The zombie creatures around us hissed and snarled at each other, each wanting to eat us up. I had thought they were all part of a single hive mind, but each zombie's snarls and yelps showed me otherwise. One of the two swans snapped at us, flapping its huge wings, but Archer swatted it away with the butt of his pistol. The bear roared, and Kaz slashed at it on the nose with his knife. The mountain lion swiped at the air menacingly, and Quint seemed to be conducting some unseen magic against it. The deer charged and knocked me off my feet, but I was able to grab onto a coat rack. What now? I yelled. I, Kaz murmured, I don't know. You better think of something fast, Quint grunted, wrestling with the mountain lion. I have an idea, Archer began, oddly calm. What? Suddenly... I was shoved to the side, tumbling into the two swans, knocking them over. I looked up, only to see Kaz right next to me, and then Quint. Archer remained standing in the centre. What are you doing? I cried. A swan got up, hissing and walking towards me. Hey, bird brain, Archer growled. The swan turned. Over here. The mountain lion pounced at him, only to receive a shot in the head. Still, it survived. Archer, what? shouted Kaz. Tell my family I love them. Archer ordered, cutting Kaz off. One other thing. Run. Quint nodded solemnly. I stared at him, eyes wide open, confused. So did Kaz. Quint grabbed our arms and ran, taking us with him. Shocked, I only stared, eyes wide open, following Quint's lead as he asked Kaz where the lab was. A moment later, we were in the lab. I heard more gunshots, and then a final scream. We were all silent. Archer sacrificed his life to save the world. Quint sadly, yet calmly murmured, let's not let his sacrifice go in vain. Alicia, you have to make that enzyme. I swiftly set off to work, perusing Kaz's lab and the information Shepard Technology had gathered, I looked through slides and slides of data, peered through observations and witness statements. An hour later, I was done. Or so, I hoped I was. 
We still have to blow up that heart, right? Kaz asked. Archer handed me these grenades before we parted, Quint informed, revealing three small spheres. It's not much, but I hope it'll get the job done. Anyway, we ready? I should test the enzyme on a subject first, I explained. I'll need one of the infected. Not a problem, Quint murmured, walking out of the lab, then returning with a transparent-looking demonic mouse with long tentacles. I saw a room filled with test animals down the hall earlier. Looks like they all got infected. Wonderful, I replied, setting the mouse in a cage and injecting it with the enzyme. And instantly, the mouse began to squeak loudly, and suddenly, blood seemed to gush through it. Its skin began to darken, its tentacles fell off, and just as quickly as it had begun, the writhing thing had reverted back into a mouse, same as any other of its kind. I picked it up. It squeaked in my hand, unaware of what it had done. I put the mouse down, and it scurried to eat some breadcrumbs off the floor. It, it worked! I cried out in joy. I did it! Well, Kaz replied, sorry to rain on your parade, but there's still hundreds of others waiting to be cured. Right, I realised. We have to aerosol this thing. Kaz and Quint nodded, and we got right to work. We were optimistic now, ready to save the world. We were just about done, when all of a sudden, Dr. Kreese walked into the room. Thank God you guys are all right, she said, heaving a sigh of relief. We looked at her sternly. Cut the crap. We know it was you who opened the doorway to the other world, Kaz snapped. You caused this whole mess. That's nonsense, Anna retorted. I did nothing of the sort. I sent them to Mayflower Springs, Quint confessed. When? How? she gasped. When I tried to kill Dr. Valerio, Quint explained. We saw the documents, Dr. Shard and all, I spoke. You really should have listened to Quint's warning. All right, Dr. Kreese retorted. So what do you plan to do with that information? Reveal it to the public, of course, I hissed. The world knows this is out now. You won't be able to cover it up, and the public deserves to know the truth. Now we're planning to get into the other world and kill that beast, the Devourer. I see, Kreese murmured. I suppose there's nothing I can say to stop you from revealing that information. Right? Right, I sneered. You're getting exposed. Kreese pondered for a while, and suddenly, she whipped out a pistol and started shooting at us. Quint leaped, grabbing me, sliding to the floor. A bullet hole appeared behind me. We scrambled behind a lab table, hiding from a barrage of bullets Kreese sent against us. Isn't this a little excessive? Kaz panicked. I must maintain the integrity of Paracel Industries, she growled. There will be no explanation. Then who's going to kill the Devourer? I snapped. Paracel Industries will handle that, she snarled. Of course, we'll credit you with the posthumous discovery. And how will you explain drilling doorways into other worlds? Kaz pointed out. Well, I never said we were going to admit we opened the first doorway, she shot back. I'm sure it was an accident by some other company. Shepherd... After all, they're the ones who have a research lab in the other world. Chris laughed and continued to shoot at us. We crept around the lab, trying to make it to safety. Not so fast, Chris got in, appearing in front of me. I gasped. Dr. Chris held her finger on the trigger, ready to shoot, when Quint seemingly appeared from nowhere, slamming himself into her, knocking her into the ground. They tossed and tumbled until, bang, a hole appeared in the back of Quint's deep purple clothes. Blood poured out of it, and Quint backed and fell to the ground. Now stand back, the rest of you, Kreese hissed. You'll all soon get your whack. Kaz struck Dr. Kreese on the head with a heavy folder. She turned to look at Kaz, making a feeble attempt to aim a pistol at them, but Kaz hit her once again. She fell to the floor, unconscious, with a thud. Well, that was surprisingly easy, Kaz murmured. I thought that'd be harder. Quint, I realised, rushing over to the floor. Quint was injured, but he was still conscious and breathing. I'll be all right, Quint murmured. You have to get to the world between worlds. 
How? I questioned. You never told us how. I do, Kaz mumbled. Quint nodded. Shepard Technology brought me here first, to study the world between, not just at Creasing Mountain. There's a doorway there, Kaz remembered. It leads directly into the lab, the one taken over. Exactly, Quint breathed. I don't have access, Kaz realised. How are we going to get there? Quint pointed to Dr. Crease. We rushed over, searched her pockets, and she had stolen Daniel Shepard's access card. I guess she ended up doing some good for us, at least. I wonder what she was going to do with Daniel's card, Kaz murmured. Probably use it to steal our data. That's not important, Kaz, I reminded. We have to stop the Devourer. Go, Quint declared, handing us the grenades. Go and kill a god.